Welcome to Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel with Katie Lee. All the best resources you'll ever need at Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel. Hi guys, it's me, Katie Lee, CGC, and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a long time and that's because my baby's here. I'm nursing her right now, but maybe you'll see the back of her head later. If you want updates on my pregnancy and my baby, you can check out my other channel, Katie Lee CGC Talks Fertility and Miscarriages. Um, you'll find links to that easily. I also have an Instagram account for that. So if you want to hear more about pregnancy, miscarriage, genetic testing, and how it intersects with fertility, go check out that channel. But if you're just here for the genetic counseling content, that's great too please like this video and please subscribe so you can be notified when new content comes out. Today, I'm talking about CV advice. If you are in the midst of creating your CV for applying to genetic counseling graduate school, here are some tips. Now, one thing I want to say as a caveat is that a lot of this is, it's personal preference. Even if you asked, you know, 15 genetic counselors or even 15 people who are involved in interviewing genetic counseling candidates, um, you might hear different advice. So these are my preferences. Tip number one is tracking. Okay, this is something I did not figure out until two years ago into my genetic counseling career. And I'm like, Katie, what are you doing? You need to be more organized. You want to track everything that you're doing professionally. So for me, I have a Google spreadsheet with a bunch of different sheets where I track all of my licensures, my state licensures. I track all of my CEUs, my continuing education units that we have to accrue as genetic counselors to maintain our licensure and maintain our certification. I track all of my genetic counseling expenses. I track all of my meetings, all of my meet and greets with new individuals, new potential students, so I can remember their name and I have their contact information. And I have saved a few tidbits of what we talked about. Um, or things that we had in common, because that is a great way to network. Um, I track all of my jobs, all of my salaries and hourly pays for my consulting work. I track my raises. I track it all. And you want to be doing that too. So in the context of applying to genetic counseling school, like if you're somebody who's not planning to apply for another year or two years, what you want to do is get a spreadsheet started and start tracking everything. You want to track how many hours you did it. When was the start date? When was the end date? In fact, I'll show you kind of an example right here. So here's an example of a Google sheet you could use. Um, this is, I just made up this quick Google sheet, but I put it in my book with all of my different um, tracking sheets. And here I have some different things listed, work and volunteer experiences. You want to track the company, the title you held, the address, the contacts that you made. So you can always go back and reach out to those people if you might want to in the future. Um, your start and end date, your salary, your hourly rate, and any notes. And then similarly, you'll want to track genetic counseling exposure, like um, people you met for informational interviews or for shadowing. Track how many hours, where they were located, and their contact information, again, because you might want to reach out to them in the future. And then, of course, you could make additional uh, categories, maybe for webinars, podcasts, and books. Even if you're not going to include this information in your CV, this can be really helpful to jog your memory. For example, maybe you are going to be interviewing at a program and you attended one of their program's webinars or a webinar hosted by an interviewer. Um, so you could maybe have some quick notes here to jog your memory because I do know how they all start to jumble together. So do yourself a favor, create a quick spreadsheet. I know you won't regret it. This way you're never going to be scratching your head wondering when your start date was for something or what the name of that person was that you talked to or the book you read. Um, it will all be in one place, which is a fantastic way to simplify things as you're creating a CV or preparing uh, for interviews. Okay, tip number two, length. How long should a CV be if you're applying to grad school? In my opinion, a two-page CV is plenty. It is becoming more common for people, even really young applicants, um, to have like a four-page CV. In my opinion, I think that's nuts. Not everyone thinks that's crazy, but I do. I don't want to look at a hundred four-page CVs and see every podcast you've listened to, every genetics book you've read. I think it's very silly actually to include those types of things unless you don't have anything else to include for your genetic counseling exposure. If you're somebody who's shadowed, who's done informational interviews, those are the things that should be on your CV. Not every podcast, article, book, webinar that you've gone to. 
only include those that are relevant to the program if you're going to include any, especially if you have other activities to list. So maybe if you listen to a webinar hosted by that program, yeah, include it. But don't include all 30 webinars that you've attended over the past like three years while you've been interested in genetic counseling. That is way too much. That is crazy. If I created a CV like that, I mean, it, it's just, that's not the purpose of the CV. You would only include those things if you have nothing else to include to show that you've learned about genetic counseling, which if that's the case, that's okay. But if you are like, I'd say most applicants and you have informational interviews and um, maybe an internship or um, shadowing experience, that's what you include instead, in my opinion. What about like work experience that's unrelated to genetic counseling? Like say you worked at Kohl's or something. What you want to ask yourself is, does this experience make me a better genetic counseling grad student applicant? Yes or no. And if you can't tie it in, if the answer is no, or it's like barely yes, drop it off the CV, especially if you already have other things to get to the two page mark, drop it right off. You do not want to fill your CV up with stuff that's not going to, you know, be highlighted by you during interviews or be of interest to those who are interviewing you. At the same time, if you don't put a specific experience on your CV, the people who are reviewing them, they're not going to know about it. So if there's something relevant that you think makes an experience worthwhile to list on that CV, go for it. Put it on there. Um, one thing you can do if you have a lot of shorter experiences, like things that you were only involved with for a month or three months or, um, you know, only one hour a week for a short amount of time, is you can list all of those things, but maybe you just put one bullet point explaining what it is rather than three or four bullet points. So you want to be concise and you want to highlight the most important things about that experience in the description. You want to think about, did I dedicate a significant amount of time to this experience or is it a one-off when you're thinking about whether to list it? And I could see a CV being more pages, three or four pages, especially if you're somebody who's um, been in multiple careers. This is a second career move. But for those of you out of undergrad, really try to refine it to the things that are most relevant, that you spent a significant amount of time on that are really going to make you stand out as an applicant. You also don't wanna crunch everything together. So if the spacing starts to look really, really tight, I'd say my preference would be just go on to another page. One other thing I'll mention is I find it pretty silly when people include things from like high school. I've even seen people include things from middle school unless it is a significant achievement. And really one of the only things I can think of that I've seen that seemed significant to me was being an Eagle Scout. So unless it's a significant achievement in high school, you just wanna start with undergrad experiences. You don't wanna go way, way back. That looks just a little bit silly to somebody who, you know, is already in the professional place to list things from when you're like 15, 16 years old. Next tip, download a professional template. It is so nice these days that we don't need to have those boring ass uh, Microsoft Word Times New Roman templates. And you can find a beautiful template or make one yourself if you're into design. Uh, you can find free templates all over. You can find free Google Doc templates, free Microsoft Word, Microsoft Publisher templates. You can use Canva and create a beautiful CV for free. Or you can go to something like Etsy and you can spend a couple of dollars buying a template that's already been created. I like to think of myself with somebody with a little bit of an eye for design and I love a pretty template. Don't go crazy, you know, you don't want more than two fonts, you don't wanna go insane with the colors, but a little bit of color, a little bit of design, I think it goes a long way and it's eye-catching and um, even can help with organization compared to the old school Microsoft Word CVs that were standard 10 years ago. Okay, and then my last piece of advice, which you can take with you for the rest of your career, is you want to make a standard CV. So for me, I have a longer CV where I've listed everything. Um, okay, not everything. I don't list things that are inconsequential, things I didn't spend much time on, but I've listed all of my publications, um, all of the talks I've given, or talks I've given that are not repeats of other talks I've given, um, all of the unique talks I've given, I should say. And this general CV becomes my template for when I'm applying to different things. Um, and over the last six years, as I've applied to clinical jobs, laboratory jobs, um, startup positions, consulting gigs, I use that main template and make a new template. And I'll call it like Katie Lee, 
Clinical, Katie Lee Laboratory, Katie Lee Reproductive, Katie Lee Startup. And I will target the words I'm using, which um, roles I highlight, which experiences within the roles I highlight and write about, depending on the specific position. And now I have this bank of probably, I'd say I have like six or seven different CVs that are targeted towards different audiences, different career types. And, you know, I'd only include the research that's relevant. And that way it's short. It's shorter than it would be if I had everything the way I do on my general template. But it also is targeted, which is key when you're applying to jobs. And it's also important when you're applying to grad school. So what I would say is get this CV going where you have everything listed. And then as you're going through different schools, you're going to check what requirements they have. You know, some schools require you to list your grades for certain classes for those prerequisites. So you're going to have it all on your general CV. You don't need to worry about the formatting. It's just getting all the text there. And then when you go to apply to each school, you're going to create the slightly modified CV um, where you have exactly what you need for that school. So maybe the webinar that that school hosted, maybe you happen to shadow some GCs that work or are associated with that program. So you would highlight those experiences um, in that CV and then rename it and save it. And I highly recommend doing that too once you start applying to genetic counseling jobs. Okay, guys, so that's it. Those are my tips for getting started on your CV for genetic counseling graduate school. Let me know what questions you have about applying to genetic counseling graduate school. Thanks for watching. Again, please like and subscribe. Check out my other channel if you want to hear more about my baby girl. Bye, guys.